Hello everybody, it's Boaz Feiler and I'm here with a weekly astrological message. I'm <clears throat> filming in New York. Um, I'm here to see clients. I've been to the Kepler conference in Florida. It was wonderful bringing researchers from world over and astrologers dealing with empirical research that supports astrology. And we went through all that, those very interesting researchers from the Mars effect, then the tenacious Mars effect that actually proved that Michel Glucon and, and everything he did was viable and not even viable. It's a book <clears throat> that was published by one of the people who tried to disprove his theory and his um, research. And what he said in this book is that when they, when the scientists, other scientists trying to disprove the Mars effect, did their own research, they found even um, more potent results than uh, Michel Glucon did. And <clears throat> they, he wrote this book, The Tenacious Mars Effect, really as, a, as an apology and a, you know, going clear, saying that they had to hide the results in order that they won't support astrology, but now the true results are coming out. And we saw researchers uh, that uh, deal with uh, how cesarean sections affect our, um, our personality, our evolution, and the amount of violence that we have in our society, of how misspellings go up when there is a Mercury retrograde uh, regarding uh, comments on Amazon, for instance. Everything proven and checked. We ha now have models that can predict and very accurately whether a female person is, uh, is subject to have uh, breast cancer, is in a, at the high risk to have breast cancer in her life. Some of them were very accurate. Some models reached up to 95% accuracy. <clears throat> uh, some uh, researchers took the personality uh, trait test that is very prevalent in the psychological world and applied it to astrology and found out that if you have uh, strong planets, if you have personal planets and, and a strong marking of fire planets in your chart, then you would be more of an extrovert. If you would have a, more of an earth orientation in your chart, you would be more introvert. If you would have air very strongly in your chart, you would be emotionally stable. And if you would have a lot of water in your chart, you could be neurotic. So, <clears throat> very, very interesting uh, researches that are coming out, utilizing supercomputers and big data and really taking a giant leap forward in everything that relates to empirical research in the field of astrology. And the wonderful thing is about computers and algorithms is that they have no regard for tradition. You put it in and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it brings a lot of surprises to us astrologers and we become wiser and we become more exact. It's about us as astrologers taking our game up a notch and leaving behind outdated, un proven uh, theories and staying with what works. So if we go and, and, and look back at this week that is coming, it's the week of 28 January until February 4th, uh, 2017. So planets are starting to move from all that cluster that we had in Pisces into Aries. The first planet to move on January 28th is Mars, the planet of action, the planet of all our lower chakras and our male energy of initiative, of defense and war. <clears throat> everything that is carnal, everything that deals with our own survival. And that planet moves into its ruling sign, the sign of Aries. It's very potent there, it's very strong. And more planets are to follow. And we could feel like a lot of the passivity, a lot of the stagnation, a lot of the mist is dissipating. And there's a great need that comes from within to actually do some action in the outside world. Suddenly things become clear and we know 
what it is we need to do. And we want to take action, we want to take things forward. We can no longer keep quiet. We can no longer be passive. We can no longer feel influenced. It's about bringing to life what it is we need to do right now. So suddenly things become much more pressing in places that we've turned away our gaze before and ignored. Venus is going to join Mars in Aries in February 3rd. We're going to talk about that too in a second. But if we go back to Mars a second, the positive outcome could be that we actually take things forward in our life, that we are full of initiative and energy to actually complete our goals and take affirmative actions to change situations that need a change in a long time. But, as we know, Mars to be, it's a lot of agitation, a lot of anger, and a lot of male energy. We have to be careful that our actions would not be violent, that our action would not be confrontational, that we would not produce reactions that are not positive in our surroundings. We would um, need to be extra considerate and extra focused on the long-term effects of what it is we are doing this week. When Venus moves into Aries, Venus is influenced by this Arian energy, by this male energy. She becomes a little more male herself. She's looking for immediate satisfaction, and Venus is connected with anything to do with the five senses and satisfaction and love. So we have to be careful, you know, with all these energies, male energies in the sky, they can make us, um, they can make our desires much stronger, they can make our anger stronger, they can make our frustration stronger, and we would want things to change, and we would want that to be immediate. So, oh, here's more. <laughs> Let's finish. So that was more, my host coming in, beautiful, beautiful person. Let's continue. So when we have uh, all these male energies in the sky, we need to channel our energy in a positive manner. We need to make it creative and we, may, we need to make it work for us or we can get out of control. And really focusing on the long-term effects is key right now and being sensitive and, and, and not letting that martial energy affect our Venus too much. There are parts of us that need to remain feminine, that need to remain soft, that need to remain sensitive, and bringing in that male energy to that place can make us more shallow, can make us more impulsive, can make us do things that we can never later regret and on the very positive side, we could actually take affirmative action in the fields that Venus is in charge of. Remember that Venus went its, into its shadow, it's approaching its retrograde, it's almost conjunct Mars, and, <clears throat> and everything connected with relationships, love or income, we can take some affirmative action there and take things forward. We just have to make sure that it's done in a way that is sensitive, sincere, and positive enough so it won't create any negative reactions in our surroundings. Jupiter is about to retrograde the planet for our philosophies, mind frame, our truth, everything we hold to be true. And Jupiter is going to retrograde at February 6th, even though I want to say something about it right now. Uh, when we have a planet retrograding, everything that connects with that planet operates differently gives us a different perspective that eventually brings us a um, better understanding of things as a whole and a wider angle on, on things. But this is the planet that is concerned with wisdom, with luck, and with our ev everything that we hold true and, and everything that we believe in. So first of all, we could change what we believe in in this time. Our opinions, our philosophies can change. We have to be careful not to become too radical. We have to be careful not to believe in false ideologies at this time. We could be swept away by things that usually wouldn't touch us. But this is a time for change. It is a time for upgrade. 
it is a time to uh, allow us really to broaden our horizons and take it up a notch regarding our the way we perceive life and our own truth but we have to do it from seeing different angles that just don't become obsessed with something that before was unseen and think that that's the only angle always keep a comparative view um, that's about it for today Uh, this week I'm going to put up a video very soon with Kenrick Ritchie and Robert Curry two amazing researchers and astrologers and an interview I had with them on the beach in uh, Florida regarding empirical research and astrology so stay tuned thank you for watching this is Boaz Feiler bye bye